morning. I'm relatively new here. I just recently moved, and so a lot of you folks don't know me. My name is Beth Steva. And as I searched around to find a church, and I found this place, and I feel like I've come home. Now, I'm looking for my grandmother, though, and I don't see her. So my guess is she's down in the basement plucking feathers from the chickens singing Blessed Assurance. <laughs> Honestly, I remember that as a child. So on that happy note, please stand and join me in the call to worship. In the presence of God, tears emerge from a hidden, hidden ache. Joy ascends like a rocket in the sky. Glad hearts are refreshed. Broken hearts discover healing. Here in the presence of God, we are made whole and sing our joyful song of praise. Please remain standing for hymn number 160. I love to tell the story.
Please be seated. And again, welcome to worship this morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. The announcements, <clears throat> excuse me, the announcements are in the bulletin. I invite you to take time to look closely at the opportunities for service and for study that are available to us. If you have not yet done so, please assign the attendance pads at the end of each aisle and pass them along to your neighbors. It's always helpful for us to know who is worshiping with us. Uh, if you have not already taken note, you should have received a, a message this week. Uh, the uh, community blood drive today uh, is being held in Parlor A. Uh, Drop-ins are certainly welcome. We, we would encourage you, if you have time and, and a willingness, that uh, immediately following service today, please make your way to Parlor A and... Uh, help with the gift of life. It would make a huge difference in the lives of those in need, so you're encouraged to do so. Uh, also, uh, following worship today, you're going to receive another card, as you did last week, uh, a card of encouragement to invite friends to gather with us for worship, especially for next week, but uh, really that invitation is for any time in the church year. Uh, we are a family, a community of faith. We look forward to the opportunities to inviting others to be with us and to be a part of this family of God. Uh, the choir will now lead us in a, a special, a very, very special anthem that, uh, that speaks to the importance of God at work in our life.
The New Testament reading is from 1 Peter, and it's found on page 1105 in your pew Bibles. Finally, all of you, have unity of spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse, but on the contrary, repay with a blessing. It is for this that you are called, that you might inherit a blessing. For those who desire life and desire to see good days, let them keep their tongues from evil and their lips from speaking deceit. Let them turn away from evil and do good. Let them seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what, eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear. What they fear, do not be intimidated. <coughs> But in your heart, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. May God and his blessing to the reading of his word. This morning we have the... Uh, the joy to participate uh, together in the sacrament of baptism, a uh, very special opportunity for our family, and uh, we are delighted that this might happen in uh, the life of our community of faith, our church family gathered here. And so I'm going to invite Elijah and family to come forward. And I would invite the congregation to turn in your hymnals, uh, beginning at page 724. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of holy baptism, we are initiated into Christ's body as his holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, and we are given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift to us, offered freely and without price. I ask you, do you renounce the devil, all his works, and reject the evil powers of this world? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you repent of your sin, turn to Jesus Christ? Confess him as your Lord and Savior. If so, answer, I do. Do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? If so, answer, I do. Do you accept the responsibility to resist evil, injustice, and oppression by the grace and power of God? If so, answer, I do. Will you obediently keep God's holy will and commandments? and walk in them all the days of your life by the grace and power of God. If so, answer, I will. Amen. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, profess his faith openly, and lead a Christian life? If so, answer, we will. We will. To the congregation, Will you who witness these vows encourage these persons in the faith and do all in your power to support them in their life in Christ? Let us join with them to proclaim our faith in the words of the ancient baptismal confession, the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, when nothing existed but chaos, your spirit swept across the waters and brought forth life. When the world had fallen into sin, in your great mercy, you saved Noah and his family through the ark from the destruction of the flood. In the baptism of your well-beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in the River Jordan, you sanctify the element of water for the mystical washing away of sin. Look mercifully now upon Elijah. Wash and sanctify him through your Holy Spirit that he may be delivered from destruction, received into Christ's church. Make him steadfast in faith, joyful through hope, rooted in love so that he may pass through the waves of this troublesome world and finally come into the land of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. We do give you thanks, almighty and ever-living Father, and we praise you for your infinite goodness and mercy. Above all, we thank you for your most dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, as he hung upon the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. From his side flowed both water and blood for the healing and cleansing of the world. After his resurrection, he commanded his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We ask you now to sanctify this water by the power of the Holy Spirit. Grant Elijah be cleansed from all sin and receive the fullness of your grace that he may ever remain faithful in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Elijah, Mark, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I told you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by the gift of water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon Elijah forgiveness of sin, received him as your own child by adoption, and made him a member of your holy church. Raised to new life of grace, increase his knowledge, confirm his faith, sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit, that he may enjoy everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us welcome Elijah, a newly baptized member of Christ's church. We welcome you and receive you into fellowship of the church. We promise to surround you in a community of love and forgiveness as you grow in Christ, so that you may confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in the royal priesthood of all his people. To the glory of his name. Amen. We have, uh, you're, you're real close. You almost made it a certificate of baptism, uh, a cross reminding of our Savior's uh, death and resurrection for our sake, and these wonderful keepsakes that have been created by uh, Shirley Crone and uh, a blessing uh, and a remembrance of this special day. Uh, can we welcome our newest uh, brother in Christ? You could take these. Back.
and an attitude of prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for the blessings of this day as we gather together as a community of faith. We pray now that you would uh, speak to the hearts of all gathered here, that we might understand uh, that uh, worship happens not when we set aside an hour of the week to gather with like-hearted brothers and sisters in Christ, but that worship happens when we bow before you, when we open our hearts to you, when we set aside time in our daily walk to be with you. We pray your blessings upon those gathered here this day, family uh, who, who celebrate uh, with Elijah, who is uh, uh, speaking to you right now. And, <laughs> and we pray, dear Lord, and give thanks for, for uh, his wonderful presence and for the joy that comes in, in having him in our life already. We thank you for the blessing that comes in being a part of the community of faith known as the church, the family of, of God that, that gather together and support one another, encourage one another, and we are blessed this day by this holy moment. But we also recognize that there's brokenness in the world and brokenness in many lives. We pray where there is, is sickness for healing. We pray where there is a feeling of, of being lost that people might be found, where there is mourning that they would be comforted and that you would work through even us to bring about those changes in people's lives. Ready us in the coming moments for time in your word. May we be uh, reflecting upon how those messages of scripture speak to us, not as history, but as uh, relevant, important challenges of faith. And then, and then may we in our time uh, respond to those challenges by stepping out and making a difference in the world and for your kingdom. Bless us, O oh God, as we uh, continue this time in praise of worship. And we lift our prayers to you this day in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to say together when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue our praise and worship of God as we return in our gifts, tithe, and offering.
all that we have and all that we are, O oh God, are gifts that come from you. Receive now the offerings that we return. May they be used for the furthering of your kingdom through the ministry of the church to a world in need for the privilege and the honor of serving you in this way. We give to you our thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing together. Number 155, Jesus loves me this I Good morning, everybody. You know, I was pretty relaxed until Mason walked in the door, and then I thought, oh, no, I have two goals. Make them understand what I'm saying, and don't let me make Mason cry. <laughs> Made me a little nervous last time. I have a box here. What usually comes in a box like this? What comes in a box? Do you know? Well, you, you might, because I give you a hint, you wear it on your feet, it comes in a box. <laughs> my shoes come in a box. I think there's shoes in my box. Don't. in the bag. 
Do you want to give something? Can you give this? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everything's in the bag. Now, what if, what are we going to do with that stuff? You want to say hi? Do you say hi? <laughs> no? Okay. Do you have any idea what, why we're talking about all this weird stuff? What if the shoebox looked like this. This is an advertisement, people. You get to pick up one of these up in the office. You get to, or in, and if you, if you don't want to shop, because it is kind of a problem, Laura and I will be happy to shop with you. Just leave your donation in the office, and they'll tell us to come and shop. So, now, this is a special box. It goes everywhere. It goes to children who don't have any money to get some toys. It goes to children who maybe lost their toys because a flood came. Your daddy took some things to the flood people, didn't he? Yeah. You let him go, and you missed him for a couple days, huh? So let's put everything that's in that bag in this box. Mason, can you help yeah. put it in this special box so it can go to a special place to a child? Okay, that's great. Go ahead, stick it all in there. There we go. Unloading was Mason's job. Reloading is not. Keep going, buddy. You're doing a good job. Okay. Get all that stuff in there. Yeah. Does it all fit? Hope so. And we can put other things in, too. Mm -hmm. Good job. And fold up that little bag, because maybe somebody can carry books. Okay, it's all in there. Oh, you know what? <gasps> we forgot something. We forgot this. Let's get Mom to say love. We forgot to put love in that box. That's what Jesus wants us to do the most, isn't it? To put love in there. Let's throw some love in. Wing it in there. Good job. Close it up so it doesn't escape. Whoa, pretty good. So if you make a box for that, you're doing things that Jesus wants you to do because he wants you to love everybody. So do you know what you're getting for Christmas? Or, yep. Yes? I'm getting a robot. You're getting a robot. Okay. Here's a paper to take to your mommy because it has a picture of your daddy on it delivering good stuff. Okay. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for all you give us. For all you give us. 
Please help us to give to other children with lots of love. Amen. Like the crowd this morning. <laughs> Please join me in the scripture that is in Matthew 28, found on page 909 in your Pew Bibles. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord <coughs> descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where they, he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him. And this is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted, and Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded to you. Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let's pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you this day. In Christ, we pray. Amen. So the challenge for each of you is to go out this coming week to find someone and to give a brief description of your life before you were a follower of Christ. Share what it was that prompted you to seek Jesus and decide to follow him. And then explain how your life is different now that you are a follower of Jesus. And then invite the other person to do the same. Amen. Kind of a short message this morning, isn't it? I've, I've been busy this week. Um, but since the message is over, if you will indulge me, I have a story to tell you. Months ago, I was fortunate enough to be elected as a reserve delegate to the convening general conference of our new denomination. The conference was to be held in San Jose, Costa Rica. Soon after that election, I received information to sign up for airline flights and hotel accommodations. I checked with colleagues to see what flight they were taking from Pittsburgh and signed up to take the very same one. 
It was all mapped out. We would arrive in Pittsburgh, and the flight would take off about 5.30 in the morning. We would land in Miami. There'd be a three-hour layover in Miami. Then you'd get on the flight to, co to San Jose, Costa Rica. There was a minor glitch when I was first given the wrong departure date, but, but that, was, that was solved in a few hours of back-and-forth phone calls. We got it all taken care of. I received confirmation of the reservations. I went about doing all the necessary things that anybody, everybody does for an international trip. I obtained a new passport. I, I got my shots up to date. I purchased a few short sleeve shirts, which I never wear and hate, because I was told it was going to be hot there. The weeks went by. It was a few days until the conference. I had confirmed with my dear friend and colleague, Janet Lord. Many of us in the church know her. She's a pastor in the Pittsburgh area, a dear friend of our family. And we confirmed I would arrive at Annie and Chad's house in Plum, stay the night. She would pick me up at 3.30 in the morning, and we would drive together to the Pittsburgh airport and get moving on our adventure. All was well, or so I thought, until I was awakened at 3.30 in the morning a day early. Hi, I'm here. You're where? Uh, I, I'm outside. I'm in Annie and Chad's driveway. I'm in bed in Warren. I still had the original and wrong departure date in my iPad calendar. So Janet flew off to Costa Rica, and I spent the next several hours through the middle of the night calling travel agents around the world and hotels and getting everything switched to the next day. I was informed that I would be on the exact same flight the next day. That's important to the rest of the story. I even spoke with a very helpful young man at a hotel in, in San Jose because I was told by the travel agent, you need to talk to the front desk. Do not talk to information. Get through to the front desk no matter what and talk to those individuals. Make sure that they do not cancel your reservation, that they've got you there for all of those days. A young man name, and his name was Wilbur. And he assured me, he assured me, Mr. Heck, your, your room will be here. I promise. And, and you should ask for me when, when you arrive at, at the Hilton. And I said, thank you, Wilbur. You, 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 I was much calmer at that point. As frustrating as it was, I was able to get everything out and, and, and in place. And, and I left at 2 in the morning for Pittsburgh Airport. I arrived around 5. And after a few more challenges of getting bags checked and, and getting to the proper gate, I, I met a handful of other pastors who were going on the same trip with us. And, and we sat there and conversed till it was time to get on the flight from Pittsburgh to Miami. We, we got there. In, in good time, and now we were there for a several hour layover before the flight to San Jose. We, we had to get from one end of the Miami airport to the other. It's a very large airport, so we all were kind of hustling and, and getting, getting over there and getting onto the right trams and getting into place, and finally we got there. We got, got situated. Everybody's kind of looking around for a place to eat and, and grabbing some food. We're sitting down. How are we going to kill the next three hours as we wait for the flight. And as I was sitting there talking with these friends and eating my $12 Egg McMuffin, <laughs> don't you love airport uh, restaurant food? Um, I had what I describe now as sort of an out-of-body experience because as I'm sitting there talking with these colleagues and hustle and bustle going on around us, I, I swore I heard my name. But it wasn't Mark, and it wasn't even Mark Hecht. I heard Mark Edward Hatchett. I was reasonably sure in that moment it could not possibly be God, because God would not get my last name incorrect. So, so I was like, what, did, I, did I actually hear my name? I, I, I put it 
put it out of my mind for a few more moments, continued the conversation. And then, and then a, a louder voice came on, on, Mark Edward Hatchet, present yourself at gate 49. I'm sitting at gate 41 with the rest of my group that is going to Costa Rica. For, 40, 49, I, I turn and I look at the rest of the group and I say, is there a second flight to San Jose? Oh yes, there is one, at gate 49. Nobody bothered to tell me that. I was told I was going to be on the same flight that, that, that I had missed the day before. And so I grab my, my phone, I grab my bag, I go running down the corridor trying to get to gate 49. And I, I turn the corner and, and the door is closed. And we all know what the door being closed means. And there was a very grumpy woman standing in front of that door. Uh, and amazingly, I don't know, I must have looked really, really sad in that moment because uh, amazingly she, o she, she opens the door and, and ushers me in and yells down the, down the, the corridor that, yes, he's here, he's here. And, 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 they, and, and I got to walk onto this very large plane where my seat is in the very back and I got to walk past everybody else who had been waiting for me. So you just keep your head down and you, you, you keep walking. Uh, got off the airplane in Costa Rica. Now I'm several hours ahead of the rest of my group, so there's nobody there with me to tell me where to go next. I wander around the airport and am able to figure out that there are, are some shuttles that are set up for, for delegates for the, for the conference and they'll be taken to their hotel. So I, I get to them after go, going through a bunch of, a, a bunch of other uh, stations in, in the airport. And I, I get, uh, at this point, I'm just, I, just, I just want to find a place to rest. And, and, and I, I, get, I get to the door of, of the bus and they say, which, which hotel are you going to? And Because they have different buses for different hotels. I said, the Hilton. Oh. Uh, they usher me on to the bu bus to the Hilton. I'm, I'm so thankful. I, I, I'm catching my breath as we're being driven. Uh, I was a half hour, 45 minutes into the city. And, and we're get, getting close. And we, we pull up at the Hilton. It's a lovely, lovely hotel. And I, I get out of the bus. I get my luggage. And, and we go to the door. And the, the doorman says, well, the, the, uh, the, the front desk is actually on the 17th floor. You go up to the 17th floor, and there'll be somebody that will help you. So, so I get on, on the, get on the elevator. I go up to the 17th floor. I, I get to the desk. And, uh, and if what you do in these international situations, you give them the, your passport. I hand them my passport. I, I, they have a reservation number. I give them the reservation number. And then a group of four of them, they just they huddle together in a corner. They went, walked away from me. And, 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 and they're, they're bu, 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 bu. I don't know what, the, nobody's talking to me. Uh, Mr. Hetchett, there's, there's, we don't have a reservation for you. What do you mean you don't have a reservation for me? I start to pull out the papers from my, from my, my bag, and I read, oh, wait, wait a minute, Wilbur, Wilbur. I said, Wilbur will vouch for me. Talk to Wilbur. Sir, there's no Wilbur here. <laughs> I said, there has to be a Wilbur here. He told me my room was going to be here. He said, he said come and talk to me when you get to the Hilton. And the man looked at me and said, which Hilton? I said, oh, there's more than one Hilton? Oh, yes, you are in the Hilton San Saba, but there is a Hilton Garden. I said, <laughs> he said, let me call. So they, they call the Hilton Garden, and, and again, conversations that I'm not allowed to listen to, but, and, and, and the, then the man behind the desk hands me the phone. Hello, this is Wilbur. <laughs> they go, uh, Wilbur, Wilbur. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Hecht, you, you've gone to the wrong hotel. But that's okay. We will, we'll get you to we'll get you to the Hilton Garden. I said, "Oh, good. Well, there'll be a bus that'll pick me." Oh no, we don't run buses between the Hiltons. You'll have to walk. <laughs> but it's not it's not far. It's not far. Trust me. It's 
maybe half a block. And I got, I got off the phone and I said to the man at the desk, well, where do I go? Well, you'll go down 17 floors and then you'll get out the door and the doorman will show you which you get to. It's perhaps a block away. And I go downstairs and I get, get out and I, 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 I ask the doorman, how far away? Oh, it's maybe two blocks away. And, uh, and, and uh, I, I can start to walk down the street. I speak no Spanish and, uh, and it's a busy part of the city and I, I go block two blocks, three blocks. I see no hotels, nothing. That, and finally, I was just ready to give up. And I'm not sure exactly in that moment what I meant by give up. I think maybe just curl up and die. That was, I was, I was, I was ready to give up. When, when I see the word garden, it was, wasn't even in big print, but it was a little garden. And I said, okay, I'll give it a try. I walk in and there's a doorman. He says, yes, you're at the Hilton Garden. Go up 17 floors to the, to, to the front desk, and, and uh, they would be able to help you. And I, I go in, I go up, and I, I get onto the 17th floor. Doors open. I walk over to the front desk, and who's standing there? Wilbur. Wilbur. <laughs> Mr. Hecht. We are so happy you've made it. Uh, we have, and and your, your room is ready. I, I, I laid down that night. Well, that night, by the way, was like four in the afternoon and went to sleep because I was so happy to have, have found a, a room to be cared for, found a place to lay down and rest my head. And I slept very, very well that night. Uh, I'd like to tell you that's the end of that story, but you got to come back next week because there's a, there's a part two to that part of the story. Um, but what, why? Why the story? Have you ever been lost? Have you ever lost your way? You thought you were on the right track. You thought you were in the right line of work. You thought you had the right kind of friends. You thought you were on your way, only to have something or everything fall apart. Maybe it was something you did to break a relationship. Maybe it was something that someone else did. Perhaps it was something completely beyond anybody's control, just the, the circumstances of the world around you. Maybe it has happened often to you. Maybe you are one of those people, sadly, that, that just seems to walk around with, the, with that, that cloud over, over your head, always raining down upon you. Some of us are like that. Maybe it's just been those momentary things, or maybe it was a huge thing at one point in your life, and, may, and you've gotten past it. And maybe, just maybe, you haven't had too many of those circumstances but every one of us has had something, something that hasn't gone right, something that, that has, has broken us, even if it's just for a moment, and we feel that we're lost. We've all been there. And many of us have been in those situations before we came to know Jesus, before we came to understand that there was, in fact, someone out there. Maybe we didn't even know them by name. Maybe we did know them. Maybe their name was Wilbur, but we knew there was somebody out there that would help us. There was one watching over us. One who knew us by name. Of course, it's not Wilbur, it's Jesus. Jesus. Some of us grew up knowing a, lo a lot about Jesus. We could answer all the questions about where he was born and how he died and when he rose again. But we never really took the time to get to know him. We knew about him. And maybe it was because of a moment of crisis, a time of being lost, that you were prompted to seek Jesus and even decided to follow him. Maybe you didn't even understand that's what you were doing in that moment, but, 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 but I tell you that is what was happening. Whether you understood it at, or not, in that moment you were changed, or at the very least, at the very least, you were beginning to change. For me, I grew up in the church. <laughs> and so did he. For me, I grew up in the church. I was always there. My parents were always there. I had always been a part of it, and I understood much, or at least I thought I did, about Jesus. 
But I can tell you that, that I've learned so much more about Jesus as I've witnessed him at work in the lives of his people in the church. When persons of faith have reached out in times of crisis, when they've celebrated with my family the joyful moments of life, as we're doing today, when they've been willing to walk the same challenging path with me to see things through, I have been blessed. In those moments, I have seen Jesus, my Lord. I've been very fortunate in ministry, very blessed in ministry to, to have had two long-term pastorates. Our previous church before coming to war in 14 years, and we've been here 11 years at this point. But there's, there's something that you, you, a lot of lay people don't, un, don't realize, and not that you really should be expected to realize, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. When the clergy have, have a blessed relationship and be able to be with you a long time, our understanding of you changes just as your understanding of us changes. And the way we relate to you and what we think and the way you relate to us and what you think does evolve and it changes. I've been thinking about that a lot lately because this past year has been filled with a lot of, well, to be perfectly honest, there have been any number of deaths in the life of our church. Not that we haven't suffered losses in the past, but there have been several this year that, that have really spoke to my heart in a very different way, and, it, and something dawned on me. Because I can go back to, I, I was in town, I think, four days, and the first person from the life of the church passed away, and I, you know, I did my best in ministering to the family, caring with, for them, and, and walking alongside them. And I believe they were comforted, but but you know, when we first get, get to town, you're strangers to us, and we're strangers to you. So when we, we walk through, with you through, through those holy moments, those special moments, whether, whether it's a, a funeral or a wedding or a baptism or just a crisis of faith or a joyful celebration, you, we're strangers. We're together for a little while, and you become church members to us. And that's a different kind of relationship. If we're here long enough, we become friends. And that's very special. But then, beyond friends, we become loved ones. And it's all difference in the world when you're burying a stranger and you're saying goodbye to a loved one. If that's the case, even to sir, any, any degree, if that's the case for human beings in our relationships, imagine, imagine how much more it is for our Lord and his relationship to us. Think of it. We begin as estranged from God. But we see Jesus in others and in our lives. And in time, we get closer and closer. And ultimately, beloved. <coughs> and as that happens, we're changed. And so too can the world around us be changed. And it's amazing to me how often those moments find their way into our relationships in the pain of life. There's a passage that is associated with, with the end of World War II. And it, there's a lot of different interpretations of it, but if you do, if you do a deep dig on, on the, the details... You find that, that uh, underneath a prisoner of war, a, a, a concentration camp in Germany during, during World War II, there were actually um, 
tunnels that were constructed and rooms that were added underneath so, so the, the, the prison guards didn't even know they were there. And, and over time, people were able to be, uh, people who were incarcerated, people who were in, imprisoned in those camps before being put to death, they were, they were hidden away in those tunnels, hidden away in those rooms. They, they had a kitchen and, and a library and, and a place for them to sleep. And, and everything happened in complete and utter darkness where they were cared for and hidden a few at a time. They would cook at night so that, that they wouldn't see, see the smoke rising. All of those things were happening. And at the end of the war, at the end of the war, uh, uh, the Allies come in and they, 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 they free the camp, but, but uh, a group was, was doing some re reconnaissance, looking through, and they found these places. They found this existing underneath. And, and on the wall in that room were those words. I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love when I feel it not. I believe in God even when when he is silent. Powerful offering that the choir shared with us this morning. But I found out there's just another line. There's an additional line that makes all the sense in the world in light of the description that I've just given you where it was found. The last line. I believe in neighborly love though it be unable to reveal itself. Sometimes it can. Because we all have a story to tell. Give a brief description of your life before following Christ. Perhaps it's like a trip to Costa Rica that you think you had all worked out, that you had everything in place, that you knew exactly what was going to happen, only to be derailed time and time and time again. Is that life for you? Has that been your life? Or some certain example like it? Share it. Then share what it was that prompted you to seek Jesus and decide to follow him. Maybe it was, it was knowing that there was a Wilbur out there that was watching out for you, that made a difference, that cared enough. And then explain how your life is different now that you are a follower of Jesus. Maybe that's how you witness what has happened in the life of your community of faith and the loved ones around you and the difference that we made as, as strangers become family, and family become beloved. And then invite others to do the same. How can we not? You have a story. Share it. Amen. Let's stand and sing.
is there to uh, participate by sharing the gift of, of, of blood, the gift of life, uh, if you have time following worship this morning. We have gathered to praise God. We go forth to tell our story and invite others into this community of faith. Go and do as you have been instructed and be a blessing. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace and love.